So we have Ian here measuring up at the moment, and Ian and I can't actually decide what we like. So last week, we had a bit of time away from Seahorse and did cushions instead. We had Ian Rand from Lunan Upholstery to give us an idea on what we could do and how much it might cost. But this week, we're back on board the boat. We replaced that engine seacock that was such a pain to get off. Wondering, in the summer, when you're hot and sweaty, do you find yourself sticking to this? So, today I'm going to do this seacock. Seahorse originally, it's a Volvo Penta 2020, I think it is, 2002, some of one of those, two cylinder, small two cylinder, 10 horsepower diesel engine. Um, had this seacock on its sail drive leg. That screwed into the top of sail drive leg, plastic hose barb into there, and um, I guess probably worked okay when it's brand new, but for since ever we've had Seahorse, it's just had a wheel on top of here, not a normal handle, um, and it's been seized up. And that, that brings on a whole other question about seacocks, in that some people seem to just leave their seacock open all the time. Um, but Hannah and I are firmly in the camp of you turn your seacocks off every time you leave the boat. Um, two things, one is, you've minimised the amount of things that could go wrong and your boat sink. Now it's only the seacock, not the rubber hose and all the things it's connected to. And the other thing of course is you test your seacock. So if ever you need to use it to stop your boat sinking, you know it works. You leave them on all the time, you don't know how bad the corrosion's got, how much build up of barnacles the ball might have, whatever. So um, yeah, we're firmly in the, you, you turn it off cap. Except we never could turn off our engine seacock, which we were never that happy with. Um, so I'm replacing it. And it was a real effort getting it off. If you look back a couple of a couple of weeks ago, um, it's been a real struggle. I've never actually filmed getting it off because it's in a ridiculous place. I'll show you in a minute in case you haven't seen. But I'm going to replace that with this collection of bronze fittings I've bought. Um, it's a bronze half inch nipple with a bronze 90 degree elbow a DZR ball valve because I couldn't get anything bronze in anything like the right size or shape to fit on top of this cell drive and then a, a hose barb. The, um, and I'm going to run it, I'm going to put it in the engine like that which I sort of wanted to do in the first place because it means the hose is being kept very low down. If I have it going straight up the impeller has got to suck the seawater all the way up there before it can start going into the engine. That way it's a, an easier route to the engine. Except I asked a question, I've asked various questions on the Practical Boat Owners um, forum, which is a very good resource for people like me or you, if you're watching this, I imagine you're interested in boat maintenance. Someone on the Practical Boat Owners forum would have done this before. And one of the questions I asked, for example, was, like that nipple is a tapered, half inch tapered thread. Same as that end of the ball valve's half inch tapered thread. This hose barb is a half inch tapered thread. Sorry, yeah, this hose barb. But this ball valve, as far as I'm aware, is just a straight cut thread and so is the um, hole I'm gonna screw this into in the sail drive leg. So I wondered, is it safe to put tapered fittings into non-tapered fittings? Anyway, the consensus is, Indeed, more than uh, you know, the consensus is yes, it's safe, and in fact, more than safe, I think it's actually recommended. But I'm not, I'm no expert on that. Anyway, the, if nothing else, the the uh, people on the practical bow on forum put my mind to rest that that's all right to screw in. But one of them sent the link of Volvo do an official set of replacement parts for that, and what they have is their own nipple, which is a lot longer than that, going straight up which then goes straight into the ball valve, like that. Then there's the elbow, and then the hose barb comes off of that. So their setup would be kind of like that, but even taller. So it makes me wonder why they've done it like that. And I was thinking, perhaps just so I don't have to try and worry about something I didn't worry about, I'll make mine like that as well. Except I can't orientate this ball valve unless I really force, um, in fact, it's not the ball valve. I can get the ball valve in that right place. This this um, elbow, 
I'm going to have to turn it three quarters of a turn past the point at which it's already comfortably tight. And I'm not really comfortable doing that. I'll end up splitting it or damaging it or whatever. You know, quarter a turn, perhaps more at it once, maybe even a half, but three quarters of a turn, I'm just going to damage it. So, um, so I've gone back to plan A, which was to, um, which was to put the nipple into the, the um, sail drive leg, then the elbow, then the ball valve, and then the hose tail. It does mean that I have to um, I have to get everything angled almost perfectly because there's not much room in there to then move the handle on the ball valve. Um, but I think I can do that. Um, so I'm going to give it a go. So it's going to go like that. The handle will go on there and can go up and down like that. And I'm hoping then the hose is coming out and goes around here with the exhaust over it. I'm not quite sure where the exhaust goes, but I don't have a lot of say, Kate saying that, and this is going to end up going where it goes. So whatever happens with the exhaust, we're going to work around that. But anyway, I should be able to get in there and reach that, that handle and pull it up. So I'm going to have a go. <coughs> Let's see what happens. So the seacock is down here. This is our quarter berth. And this area here, which is, you know, what, I don't know, just over 12 inches. Oh, I have to get round in there. And then, if the camera will show you, down there, that threaded hole is where it's all got screwed into. Oh. So, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna join it all using PTFE tape. Another question I asked on the Practical Boat Owner Forum, and there's a few different opinions on different uh, jointing pace and methods and one thing or another, and I'm sure they're all good, um, but I have some PTFE tape, so I'm gonna use that. So I'm gonna do the connections I can do here um, before I have to crawl in there, and then I'll just do the ones that matter in there, so better get started. If you haven't used this stuff before, it's really easy. It's just a thin, non-sticky kind of yeah, band of tape. Try not to get too many twists and that in it, but it doesn't matter too much. The important thing though, is to wrap it. Well, to start with, you just wrap it around the threads, pull it quite tight so it goes into the, uh, you know, the grooves of the thread. And there's a right sort of amount to put on. And I don't know what that is, Someone will probably tell me, but I'm guessing it's about three turns. Any more than that, and um, you won't screw it in the hole enough, and any less, and um, and any less, and it's it's going to leak. So about three turns, and do it in. Um, is that the direction it screws in or unscrews in? I don't know. But when you screw this into the fitting now, like this, you don't you want the tape smoothed in the same direction so it doesn't pick up that tail of the bit that's left over. <coughs> and now this we'll just screw into here. Now I can do this one here because it's not getting in the way. It's not going to get in the way when I've uh, got it all in place. The one thing I don't know, going by the conversation we had just now, I'm screwing a tapered fitting into a non-tapered hole. It's trying to swell that up and break it. So you must be able to over tighten it. But at the same time, it's my boat. I don't want it to sink. So it's got to be tight enough. And I guess that's kind of one of those things you do by feel. Um, anyway, first joint done, crack on with the rest. Oh. 
Don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty good. So then that one, that's handle was 11 millimeters, and then screws on, or the heads on these hose clamps are seven. Who uses 11 and seven? Another one of those things that there must be a right answer to, but you over tighten the hose clamp, you risk splitting the hose. It's not on tight enough. Obviously, you risk a leak. Of course, that is one of the reasons why you have two. Anyway, here we go. Ooh. One seacock. With a hose on it. Fantastic. Gotta try and remember the way all the cables that went round it, and I've got to sort out these silly um, jubilee. There's like large jubilee clips that wrap around it and tighten up onto like a pressed metal bracket to hold it all in place. Works fine, but horrible things to use. It's not nice to reach, but it is reachable. Yep. So that's it. Seacock's in. Hose is on. Exhaust is back on. I can get out of this little hole now. We'll see you next week. I'm Ian, and you've been watching Sailing with the Foxwell family. See you again.